I'm speaking today with an estate planning attorney, Kyle Barrick, and we actually know each other. We've gone back qu quite a ways, and I haven't interviewed him yet, but he came to one of our meetup groups and spoke about the intersection of divorce and family law and estate planning, and I think you'll be surprised what you learn about some of these things and how they occur and some of the pitfalls to avoid. So, Kyle, thanks for meeting with me. You bet. And before we go any further, would you please give uh, those who are watching your contact information for those who may want to speak with you later? Absolutely, you bet. I'm at 5295 South Commerce Drive, Suite 220 in Murray, and my telephone number is 801-262-4407, and my website is utahestateplanning.com. Okay. So, we've talked about this before, and you did a great job of explaining it, so where do you want to begin? Yeah, I think where I'd like to start is, first of all, to talk about some of the good news, and then maybe hit some of the bad okay. news. So, when you're looking at the intersection between divorce and estate planning, one of the first things to remember is that a divorce changes your estate plan by law. So, when a divorce occurs, the law says that any designations and a will or a trust or even a power of attorney, any beneficiary designations that are made from work with life insurance, 401k, anything like that, once the divorce takes place, the spouse is essentially no longer counted when uh, looking at, you know, wills and beneficiary designations. We skip the spouse basically and go to the next beneficiary in line on there. So. That, uh, that law is not terribly old. I think that after you know, uh, situations where people didn't get around to making changes, got divorced, and then it went to an ex-spouse, they decided, surprises and yeah, stuff. decided, hey, maybe we ought to fix that a little. So that, that wasn't that long ago, but that's, that's a nice thing. So it's not just wills then, because I know in some states, it's, they presume that your will designation, the designees have changed, but things that you have privately with a, a pension or an investment account or a bank account, those don't change. But you're saying in Utah, a divorce basically changes any designa designation like that? It really does, oh. yep. Everything, wills, trust, powers of attorney, beneficiaries, anything Life really. insurance? Life insurance, okay. yep, All it right. does. So that's, that's very good, and that's comforting. It is. That's one less thing people have to worry about if they hadn't thought about it. Right, right. now one interesting thing to think about, and I've dealt with this a couple of times, is okay great we get some uh, nice relief in the situation of a divorce what about if you're separated or you know your divorce is pending but not final um, I had a case a few years ago where this happened and it was a, a long drawn-out ugly divorce situation and uh, sure enough uh, the husband passed away two years after they separated but before the divorce was final his family came in to see me and said hey, you know, we know that he wouldn't have wanted anything to go to her. I mean, they, they despised each other, uh, but uh, they were still married. And so, you know, because they were married, she ended up getting pretty much everything. Well, this would be a good time to talk about the differences, too. Now, did she, did she get everything because she was mentioned in his will? No, didn't have a will. So no will, no trust. Yep, just... So what she did, and this is something that Kyle knows, but those of you watching may not be aware, is even though he didn't have a will that named her, but by the way, let's talk about that. If she had been named as his uh, heir, uh, or the, what's the, the beneficiary of his estate, she would have gotten everything, even though they were getting divorced exactly. because they, there was no decree. Correct. Okay, but even without a will, she gets everything, and why is that? Right, so in Utah and most states, if you're married and you pass away and you don't have children or all of your children were from that spouse, you know, you didn't have children from a prior, then everything goes to your spouse. Your surviving spouse. Yep, everything. So she would have gotten it one way or the other if she had been in his will and he hadn't changed it or if he had died intestate, meaning without a will. Yep, and he could have obviously gone out, done a will, done a trust, right? Even changed beneficiary designations on things he had. Could have done all of that. Could have done all of that, but he just didn't, didn't get around to it, maybe yeah. not even thought about it. Right. Had he done that, had he had a will where he said, look, I changed it from my wife gets everything to a anybody but my wife, would she have been completely out of luck? No, so Utah does have a couple of exceptions there. They're important and most states do as well, where if a surviving spouse is left out of the will entirely, the surviving spouse is entitled to approximately a third of the value of the estate if they're 
Oh, like, well, I'll get around album. that, Kyle. I'll just give my wife a dollar. Right, exactly. Can you do so, that? No, no, what they'll do, yep, <laughs> it's a one third of, of not only what's in the will, but your entire estate. So if you you know, have given it to somebody else through a beneficiary so designation. You can't just that get around too. that law by saying, well, I did provide for something, so therefore the, yeah, it's 30% or, it, it's 30% or um, whatever's in the will as long as it's 30%. Yep. Okay. And uh, so the, the only real way around that is through something like a premarital agreement or a marital agreement that waives that right. Otherwise, you know, your spouse has that one third elective share that they can do anytime. So. Okay. What else do you have for us? Yeah, so remember, I just, before we leave this topic, how important it, it's more important to do some estate planning pending your divorce, you know, while you're in that situation. Uh, once it's final, there's some help from the law, but while you're in that, it really is important to look at doing your planning. Now, my clients who divorce, even though you have that law to back you up that says, okay, all of these things are, are now null and void. It'll pass on to your children or your next beneficiaries. I still think it's a good idea to review your estate plan at that point. Maybe pick some different people to be in charge, you know, review how you're going to do things. I think that's a really smart thing that you do. And, and a lot of my clients do that and will call me at the time and say, you know, this would be a good time to go through. Well, this question comes to mind. So let's assume that uh, I, my surviving beneficiary is my spouse and now I'm divorced and that there's nobody there. Who is this, who gets it when there's no one left? Right, so. Does the law address that? Yes, it, it does. So the law would say that it will go to your next of kin or you know, your heirs essentially. So it doesn't say we'll take your spouse off as the beneficiary and treat as though, treat as though there is no surviving beneficiary. Correct. We will actually substitute somebody. Right, because if, okay. you, if you have a beneficiary designation that names your spouse, and then has a contingent beneficiary, it'll go to the contingent beneficiary. But if you have nobody, it'll still go to your next of kin. Right, the law will step in and it'll go to your next of kin, which remember if there are minor children involved, you know, that's an issue, right? If we end up having any substantial amount, any amount, go to a minor child, then we have an issue where they're not able to, you know, claim legal ownership of that. So we'd have to have like a guardianship conservatorship set up for them. And for people that don't that. know the difference, what's a guardianship as opposed to a conservatorship? Yeah, so a guardianship covers decisions about the person. So anything health related, education related, you know, medical, anything to do with the person. Conservatorship covers anything to do with assets. So money. Belonging to that minor child or Correct. that incapacitated person. Yep, yeah. exactly. So a lot of times they're done hand in hand, but they are two different things. Okay. Anything else you'd like to m talk about with regard to that, or do we want to move on to a new topic? Yeah, I okay. think we can probably move on to a new topic. Okay. Yeah, do you want me to move on here? And sure. I've got my outline here, so I'll take a look Excellent. here and talk about this. One thing that we haven't talked about that I think we should um, has to do with the situation where we're not dealing with necessarily a divorce, but remember earlier we talked about that where you have uh, children from a prior marriage and you're married and then you pass away how that works so, so I mentioned you had children from a prior marriage and then you remarry and have some other children or just children from a prior marriage right just okay. children from so a prior children marriage. from a prior marriage and then you remarry so you're per per perhaps you were widowed or something like that and now you have spouse number two exactly so children from the previous marriage okay yep any children that aren't with your current spouse if that happens and you, again, you haven't done your will or your trust, you know, no estate planning, which is the way it is for most people. I see where this is going. Right. So you pass away. Now who gets what? And this is really interesting because this does vary pretty considerably from state to state. Utah's law is that the surviving spouse in that case would get the first $75,000 and then half of the remaining assets. The other half would go to those children that we talked about from a prior marriage. So your second spouse does not become your uh, it, next of kin as it would be if it was just your first marriage? Well, it's a good question, yes, um, but it for, could be- For inheritance purposes. Yeah, it could it could be your first marriage, but you had a child you know, out of wedlock before okay. that. So what I'm yeah. saying, but if, if, you're, if you're in that kind of conventional situation where it's like, I, got, I, got, I had no pr children previously, married and had kids, I died without a will, my wife gets everything. You got or it. My husband gets everything. Yep. I have children either out of wedlock or with a previous spouse, that spouse dies or divorces, then I remarry. Yep. My new spouse is not 
basically going to inherit everything. Correct. Like it would be if it had been my first spouse. That's right. That's right. And you okay. can see how this is a two-edged sword, right? A lot of people will tell me, well, yeah, that's great because I want you know those children to to get something out of, and of course I want my wife to get something too yeah. so the legislature when they're dealing with this had to try to come up with what they thought was a, a fair compromise and again you can't will around it you couldn't say I am now remarried and I want everything to go to my children from my previous relationship great question sort of okay. so you can do that now if you do your spouse still has that one-third elective share that but we talked about. not the first 75000 Correct. Okay. You got it. Exactly. And that's important because a lot of people might want to do that. Right. Um, but I, the reason I bring all of this up, um, and again, some states it's a higher amount, it's a different percentage, but the important thing to remember here is that in a second marriage or you know where you have kids not with that spouse, it's really important to do your estate planning because you might be the kind of person that wants everything to go to your new spouse. You might be the kind of person that wants nothing to go to your new spouse or some combination, you know, some percentage yeah. in there. And so it's just critically important to do that. And, you know, not only so that everybody gets what you want, but also to try to keep fighting from happening. And there's hope because, as you said, it's like if you didn't do this with a prenuptial or a, or a premarital agreement, you could also do that after the fact. Correct. You can yeah. still make a deal with your spouse. Yeah, do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah. Just, well, you can call it, a, it's either a premarital or anti-nuptial agreement, meaning beforehand, or you can um, simply uh, have it be a, what's a post-marital agreement. Yeah, a lot so of people don't know that. it's not too late if you haven't thought of that. Right. Okay. Exactly. So as long as your marriage is still good, <laughs> you, know, you yeah, might be able to... you're still married and might be willing to, to make that. an agreement. Exactly. And I have done that before, um, especially where, you know, the spouses both have children from, you know, prior relationships. Then, you know, that might be something that they want to do where they waive okay. that one third. That's a really important part. So, okay. yeah. Anything else we need to run down the list on this? Let's then? see if there's anything else I wanted to cover. Well, one thing just to point out, and this, this doesn't happen often, but occasionally um, I'll have a, a situation where the, the spouse is divorced and they actually want their ex-spouse to get something. Um, and what's yeah. important there is, you remember, you can't just leave it, right? You can't just say, oh, well, well that's actually right, want because it. the right. divorce... You have, exactly. to, you have to go back and re correct uh, and redesignate them. right okay. after the divorce takes place. Then, if you change beneficiaries, do a will, power of attorney, something like that, then it can go to that ex-spouse. So. Can you just put that in the decree, saying, "Hey, by the way, we're going to uh, order around the Utah uh, decedent's estate laws or things like that, or the probate laws?" That's a good question. Yeah, I'm I don't not know sure. the answer. You yeah. don't either. So what we'd say is, why take the chance? Exactly. And simply say, you know what? Everything got revoked, for lack of a better word. Now I'm going to reconstitute some of those things. Yep. And occasionally I've seen that. You know, it, it, sometimes it's, um, you know, just uh, maybe having the spouse involved in, uh, you know, handling money for the kids, something like that. Or but we divorced for reasons that weren't that bad, and we still kind of have feelings for each other. I want to take care of you. I know it was your life's dream to go to nursing school or something like that. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for doing this, and I hope that you found this very useful. There's a lot of things you can think about, and forewarned is forearmed. And Kyle, again, for those that would like to get in touch with you because they might have some additional questions or need help, what's your contact information? Yeah, so the address, and my firm is just Law Office of Kyle H. Barrick, and the address is 5295 South Commerce Drive, Suite 220, and that's in Murray. And then uh, phone number 801-262-4407. And the website is utahestateplanning.com. Thanks again. You bet. Thank you.